You guys started playing music together a long time ago, right? Right. When so we how did you guys meet in the original sort of... We are stuff? from the same small town. Yeah. And, and we, uh, not that many people into punk rock, you know, in this very small town. Yeah. And we kind of clung to each other then and, um, yeah. and started playing music at a very young age. Just, we yeah. wanted to make something that, we wanted to scare our parents because no one else was <laughs> going to do it. The Blue Record, I mean, you did all the artwork and all that sort of thing. What came first, the art or the music? Try to kind of try to do everything all all at once when we're recording and everything like that, and mm -hmm. start start you know conceiving the artwork with the lyrics and the and the music and everything. But I mean, you got to start with something, and we started with music. So, what did you guys want to do this time around? We had a little different thing to say this time around. Yeah. How yeah. Is it different. Uh, I don't I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it had a lot to do with with Pete. Yeah. You know, coming back into the fold and. Would you say this is your deepest work to date? Absolutely, like, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Now, Pete, did you go to, you were in the army, right? You went army, You went yes. to the Iraq war, is that right? I did. Yeah. I fought, I fought the Iraq war, the initial well, war. And initial so how, how was that? I mean, it's kind of a bit, sounds a bit kind of shallow to say well, how was that, but how did that affect you as a musician? Um, like, well, it changed my life completely. Yeah. It did. It changed my life completely. And what I thought I knew before, I, you know, totally changed that too. And, um... But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's another life experience, you yeah. know, and uh, that, that you got to do something with yeah. after it's all said and done. And I was fortunate enough to make it uh, back home and yeah. all the way here to Australia, yeah, uh, you know, um, <laughs> quite fortunate, actually. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, everything in my life, you know, it's yeah. all, it, it all influences me, so. Yeah. Well, they say, you know, it's not about what you've achieved, but what you've overcome. What are the kind of the biggest things you guys have overcome to kind of get here? I mean, obviously you had a basically a life-threatening experience, but... Well, I mean, ju I mean just, mm. just speaking from the musical context, because yeah. the rest of it, the rest of it's pretty heavy, but... Yeah, totally. You no, know, just understand. speaking from the musical context, you, you at, at some point, uh, to do this type of thing, you have to, you have to, you know, take a step off that proverbial ledge. You have to kiss goodbye any sense of secure jobs or you know any sense of a secure social life or, yeah. or anything like that and just commit yourself to it or else it's it's not yeah. worth doing what drew you to heavy metal just out of interest uh i don't i don't know i mean it yeah. just it clicked it with more me in depth i grew up rock. in a place where yeah. people listen to bluegrass country and and like jam band grateful dead style stuff and none of yeah. that resonated with me whatsoever i was angry <laughs> I didn't Man. understand it, and I needed something that cut to the core. I needed something that was real, something that was good, and that's what I found. What was the first metal record you fell in love with? First, like, semi-heavy metal records that I listened to were, like, yeah. Sabbath and Zeppelin, yeah. of course. Uh, but Metallica, yeah. Metallica came into my life, and that was, yeah, it was huge. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. Master of Puppets. <laughs> yeah, it was Master of Puppets. Wait, it was like, huge. Because when you're angry and you're a teenager, you want something that kind of gets all that out. And there's nothing like heavy metal, really. Yeah, right. I mean, he, he and I grew up with punk rock. I mean, yeah. that, that was yeah. our first... That's your first, 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 first That love. was our first love. Then, and that, you know, that, that heavy metal. Punk rock writes inside. the rules, how you do things, yeah. how you earn things, how you, how you carry yourself, how you treat the rest of the world, how you, you, know, how you react and respond, question intellectualize, analyze, mm -hmm. and, and move forward. But heavy metal was just, you know, ev eventually to, to us became a way to, to channel that into something that was a little bit more complicated, a little bit denser. Yeah. And, and, you know, after a while playing three chords, four chords, just power chords, you know, I mean, I really wanted to solo. <laughs> and I needed an excuse to do it. <laughs> And got a solo. Solo. <laughs> all I wanted yeah. to do was solo. I was like sick of playing power chords. I just wanted to solo, you know. So just then, a little. so I was like, yeah. so what? What do I have to do to do this? And, yeah. and metal gave me that. You know? Well, you guys made a really beautiful record. Like it's Thank really you. intricate, and I think it it really sort of affects you. And I was thinking, I know you guys haven't really talked about the story of the lyrics or anything like that, and I can understand that because words get twisted, and this is really personal work for you. Um, it's the whole colors thing about like color transcending words, the same way the music does, or you know, a good a good way of a good way of us describing the, the whole color thing is just that. With, with the music, yeah. with the artwork, and with the lyrics, we've put so much depth there. We've put yeah. so much complexity and, and, yeah. and heaviness. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a dense, dense thing for us that we don't even like, fully understand right now. Yeah. There should be something that's, that, that adds a bit of levity to it. You know? yeah. and, Would you say like the, the guitars are almost another voice in the record? Because, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, I, 
I've always I like to hear guitars kind of speak. Yeah, I can you know? I can see that like it's because it's like you know you got two guitars, but there's like and you know you got vocals, but I mean a lot of the songs are kind of redolent with guitar, like the guitars kind of telling the story. And, and that is also what happens when you lock two guitars <laughs> in a room for six hours a day, you know, and yeah. then like that's what you know. Next thing you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a guitar record. When, when the band st when the band started, yeah, the weak the weak point and the obvious. Uh, let like weak link, I guess yeah. you could say, was was our vocals. So we, yeah. even from day one, just so you know, turn everything else up, <laughs> drown that, drown that stuff, and, and okay, you know the music's good, guys. It's been it's been, <laughs> it's been eight years, you know, yeah. and we've we've tried we've we've been making yeah. conscious strides, and you know, and sort of pushing ourselves to to de you know yeah. to to take that weakness and turn it into a strength. How did you reconnect after? Um our prior guitar player, uh, yeah. Brian, who's our, who's our drummer's brother, yeah. decided that the lifestyle of a musician was not for him. Fair. And yeah. I think in, in many ways, he is a smarter man for making that decision than we are for not making that decision. So he, just, you know, he decided that he, would, he was going to leave the band. And he, gave us, you know, he gave us plenty of notice. And, um, you know, there, wasn't, there weren't very many... There weren't any other options for us rather yeah. other than to give Pete a call, so we just gave Pete a call, and that yeah. was that's kind of it. Pretty simple. What was simple. that like, kind of getting that call, Pete? Like... Interesting. It was <laughs> interesting. It was an interesting call. Um, it actually worked. It, it worked out. Everything actually, the timing actually was great because my project Valkyrie with my yeah. bro with my brother yeah. um, was on a hiatus and had just gone on a hiatus nice. at the time. Uh, my brother going back to grad school to get his master's degree and I was scratching my head at the moment of that phone call going what am I gonna do right now am I gonna start a new project am I gonna just take some time off from playing and touring or, or whatnot and then the phone rang and I said John. Hmm. <laughs> that's interesting and so and, and that's that really and are I mean you in town or like were you like down no, the road or? I live in I live in Virginia up in the yeah. mountains you know yeah. about we are. I think we were on tour. I think I called you from Canada. Or yeah, they called me. They called me from Canada. Dude. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, and I had to go uh, go fishing on it. I had to go yeah. fishing on that. And then uh, yeah, just chill out for a minute. And then um, and then got in the truck and went back down to Savannah, which I hadn't been down there in five years or so. Yeah. You know, it's been a while. Yeah. And then we just got right to it. I mean, the day I got in, I think we said what's up for about five minutes, and then just started playing and just started getting it all together and. Yeah. And we did that for a little bit and then went right out on the road. And now, I know you don't want to talk about the story of the lyrics, but what's the story of the girls on the cover? Like the girl holding the fish and the sort of egg thing. And the yeah, I mean, secret, that's, that's... And the secret dick on it. The, <laughs> and there's all these like secret penises on the artwork. Uh, is there? The story here. There is. <laughs> from, from our very first EP, yeah. I've striven to... Strove, striven. Strove, Stroven. Stroven? I've made, I've striven. made efforts striven. to, to, to create something visual mm. that is unique to this band yeah. and is recognizable to this band and throughout, you know, throughout the years of, you know, Im image making w with this band, yeah. it's, it's sort of been this, uh, landscape and this universe that's kind of come out and these char these repetitive characters yeah, and these archetypes and, and images and metaphors and all this stuff. Do you think the reason why heavy metal is sort of on a new high and a renaissance now because it has a punk rock ethic now? A lot of the bands that are sure. now, I mean, once upon a time, heavy metal was, you know, like the I glam think, metal. Was yeah, a but it's, kind all like, of it's like money and tour buses and, and girls and drugs. It's more in depth stuff. now. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's just metal is more accessible because it's a little bit more in depth now. Yeah. You know, where so many bands still do hold to the traditional, you know, ways. Of course. So many bands are trying to, you know, are, are breaking those boundaries and crossing those lines, which is great and is awesome. And it's just people are realizing that, oh, wait, wait a minute, you know, I, I can like metal oh, yeah. now. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know, we have people who come to see us and say, yeah. you know, don't like metal, just listen to your record and, and, and you know, now I'm listening to more metal bands. It's like, oh, wow, well, cool. Well, you're, so. you're my turning band as well. Like, I have friends. I have a friend who's Jazz Fusion, total nerd, and he's like, heavy metal. And I sent him all your tracks, and he's like, well, fine. Yeah. Maybe I do like this <laughs> metal. Like, Well, I mean, cool. I, I just think, you know, there's, there's a certain cadre of bands that come from somewhere different. Mm. For instance, the first three years we existed, yeah. we were playing 200-plus shows a year, yeah. primarily in basements and dive bars there was no such thing as a guarantee there was no such thing as a paycheck or a booking agent i mean it was all it was all hand done and when you 
And when you get your hands dirty like that, when, you, when you're forced to learn the rules and forced to meet the people and shake hands and, right. and you know, everything is merit-based, you, you learn how to approach this, this, which is bigger than, way bigger than me and way bigger than anything. Than those house shows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll never you learn ever how to approach Axel Rose. The, yeah, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is you learn, you learn an understanding for this and a respect for this type of thing. Uh, and it, it's a, there's a different way of approaching it without, you know, resting on laurels or, or expecting handouts or anything like that. I mean, yeah. You know, a, to me, a crowd's a bullshit detector. They tell us how they tell us how good we are. They tell us how much we mean it. And yeah. if we're on stage and it's fake and there's they'll let us some know. posership happening, yeah. they'll let us know, and we will promptly be put in our place <laughs> and swallow that humble pie. It's kind of an honest relationship, really. I mean, it's probably the most yeah. honest, because no kid in a, in a crowd is going to jerk you off and say it's good when it's not. Absolutely like, not. They, just, no. they don't and have any interest. I won't. Interest. I refuse they to do money. it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're don't fans. Don't smoke yeah. up my ass. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, people can smell bullshit a mile away. Yeah, you know? totally. Now, question for you. Summer went to Croatia, correct, for a year? Yeah. Did he bring back something of that? Because that has a really sort of active music scene. Did he bring anything back to the band from a that sort of level? love for black metal. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> love for black metal. He did. Do you write like a whole bunch of lyrics and then you kind of jam out some No, lyrics, lyrics actually come pretty late in the game. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. With us, it's, it's like, Dude. you need to write something that, that cuts to the core, that hits you in the gut, that, yeah. that gets that reaction, you know, like... the Four of us all go, shit, that's it. And then... Because it's all based on feeling. Not, yeah. to, not to interrupt, but it is. It's all based on feeling. Yeah. And we're all, we all learn how to play by ear, so we write by ear. Yeah. And in fact, nothing gets tabbed out. Nothing gets... We just play by ear. And if it doesn't feel right, and if we've played the song live a couple of times and it still doesn't feel right, we'll change it again. Yeah. So, you know, it's that all it's, all, it's all based on an emotion and on feeling and, and how the song is carrying itself. And then comes, yeah. you know. I mean, once once you've got the once you've got just the, little building blocks, you know. Yeah, once you've got the energy like and the feeling there, then you have to think. Like, yeah. Then you have to think. Yeah. Then, then but the thinking's thinking the last thing that happens. Yes. It can it can cloud your vision a bit when you're being creative thinking because yeah. you can kind of overanalyze and forget what's meant to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, come out. I I like I mean, I think of myself as a pretty flawed musician. Like it yeah. doesn't come easy for me. Right. It just comes after years and years and years of tenaciously doing it. Like, Mus muscle memory. Yeah, there's 18-year-old kids that just blow me away yeah. and so on and so forth. So, you know, yeah. it, co it comes from work. It yeah. comes from work. It comes from tenaciousness. It comes from a desire to do it. I mean, I'm, you know, yeah. I've been doing it for so long. If I didn't love doing it, I shouldn't be doing it at all. Yeah. Should the blue record be listened to from beginning to end in one I head? absolutely should be listened 100%. to. 100%. Yeah. There's no single that, on that record. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because, like, <laughs> you know, like stuff like The Steel That Sleeps the Eye, it's on Swollen and Halo, yeah. the line, and it kind of it feels like something you can't really interrupt. Yeah. Like, it's the anti-shuffle. Yeah, it is the like, anti-shuffle, like, hopefully. And that's absolutely. important. Like, have you ever put it out on vinyl or anything, or would you it's ever do vinyl. that? It is on vinyl? Yes. Yeah. So you, you got to turn it over, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, we, did you kind of have any great masterpiece records in mind? Like, I'm not saying that you, I'm not, I'm not saying that you were influenced, like, but, but like, what you kind of wanted to achieve, the kind of level and the color and the complexity. Yeah, or? I mean, there's there's a f there's a few records, and most of them fall firmly in the 1970s that yep. Yep. that were created, and I, I firmly believe meant meant to have a sort of Slow, cinematic scope or a, or a theatric impact or yep. or a sort of sequencing that is you know one way and not the other and you know I, I, I tend to analyze those records and think about them mm -hmm. and, you know it works so well there can we can we do something like that can we do something better than that answer's probably no but uh, <laughs> you know definitely no there are there are rec there are some records there are some records where your your instinctual response to the end of one song is the is the beginning of the next right and that's 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 sort of what you know. What we thought would have been ni what is nice with our records. Yeah. I mean, we don't talk on stage. That's bullshit. I'm not going to add anything. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm John. Exactly. You may remember We're, me from this none band. None of us, none of us <laughs> individually, personally, are going to add anything to a show by sitting there and jibber jabbering with a yeah. crowd. Yeah. Which is good. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we, we don't know how to talk. No, I mean, so, not, not to say no. No, no I but mean it like but that. but seriously, <laughs> since 2003, yeah. there's never once, once in thousands of shows been in, in between song banter. It has not happened. It will never happen. 
It's just not the way we approach music. So if you go to see a Baroness show, it'll be nothing but music. Yeah. I might run my mouth a little at the end, but I get kind of worked up and emotional sometimes. I know it's like picking a child, but I'm saying like right now, a song that kind of really gets you going playing live. And no, I don't know. I can't, you I know like these like, I don't play favorites. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard for me. It's like I understand that. Some tours, some songs are more fun than others. And, you know, I like it's, playing it's a, them all. Yeah. I like playing them all. You know, what, yeah. it, what, what, it is, what it is more often than not is these people that are in, that are in front of us who've, who've graciously paid money to watch us who are who are giving us their time mm -hmm. when they reacts when their reaction is strong my reaction is strong when their reaction is weak my reaction is weak absolutely. do you feel like you've made big sacrifices to take the life of a musician yeah absolutely uh, absolutely look at us 100 <laughs> percent absolutely i mean it does i mean and, and i'm sure any musician will tell you that yeah. spends a life just touring you know and just uh being What's home the hardest thing relationships yeah not seeing my dogs yeah i love to fish love yeah. to fly fish i don't get enough time to i think there's fish flies. here like in, in australia apparently apparently yeah. there are fish here. i heard yeah i don't know i heard this crazy rumor i saw it on a menu yeah. once yeah. yeah you should check it out yeah no it'd be hard you know, no it's, like, it's hard yeah. I mean, it's, you, got, you have and it's hard on all your relationships your wife. Yeah. yeah you have people waiting right. for you back at home mm. or give up waiting yeah. <laughs> i hope not oh. <laughs> anyway yeah yeah <laughs> on with the next is question there a, is there a court jester in the band do you think is there a, like a ringleader who gets a bit silly when you're on tour or am i no i mean I here i mean the, 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 the thing is like when you do this day in and day out when you spend 24 hours a day with the same yeah five six people humor is the only thing that gets you through a day some because, of us have it some days yeah. some of us yeah. don't have it some days i mean there's there's one hour that we do our thing and then there's 23 other hours to fill up with stuff that's why you know that that's why humor is really important i mean yeah. you all you have to there has to be a little bit of jestership with everybody or else it or else it becomes you know it becomes Heavy. work yeah. and pro professionalism and all that yeah. business and Ew. yeah <laughs> And, but it doesn't hurt that we've all known each other forever. Yeah. Uh, Summer, um, who plays bass, he and I were neighbors growing up. So we've known each other since we were roughly seven, eight years old. So you're kind of like brothers. Yeah, you know, and, and we give each other a hard time. Brothers. And, yeah. you know, we give each other a hard time or, you know, just... But it's all good, you know? Yeah. Totally. It's cool. Yeah. I hope he doesn't get too mad at me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best drummer joke? Best drummer? Drummer joke. Yeah. Uh, we don't tell yeah. drummer jokes. He's got, he's got thin skin. We can't say to no, I'm just kidding. <laughs>